Um, okay, well, does anyone have any questions that they'd like to, to ask? And I'll go around and give you the mic. Uh, was the decision not to show Anita in the present tense, was it yours or was it hers? Because uh, when you were interviewing the audio. No, Ava. Ava wasn't in present tense. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Ava passed away. In no, 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 but you interviewed Anita. Interviewed but there was no footage of her. Uh, she, ah. I did ask her if I can do a photo shoot with her. Yeah. I think um, because it's a lot of work, yeah for her to stay pretty. Mm -hmm. And she felt that she was on, already in her 80s. She didn't want all oh, that okay, trouble right. anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Because in that sense, it's similar to that. I'm sure you know that Marlene Dietrich documentary where she didn't want to be shown at all. So it's just for the gist of the streets she grew up in. Yeah. Yeah, um, I really wanted to, to shoot her, but she refused. And even um, I asked her many times to sing. She, she also refused because she holds a very high standard to her own singing. Then I play all these clips that she used to perform. I think she hummed along. I'm not sure if she would be happy for me to show her singing, but I thought that song was just amazing. When, yeah. Um, is there any other questions? Oh, sure. uh, hi, I'm Su Yijin, a broadcasting student from Utah. So may I know what is the purpose that makes you want to create this video to the audience? Yeah. This question is artists? to me, not yeah. Azaha, me, me. Uh, Oh, we both can. Um, I didn't plan to make this work. Uh, I found a collection of photos back in 2013. Uh, it was a collection of a boy and a, a woman. Then I look at them, they belong to the same person. It was for quite a few years, I didn't know what to do with them because it was very private. I didn't know if I can actually show them. Not until 2017, I think, Shamin one of the curators from KL, she invited me for a show. Then I thought it's time to revisit these um, photos. <clears throat> I still wasn't sure if I can do anything about them. Maybe I need to mask their face or something. But then I started showing to friends, actually, Pang and Gavin. I thought they know everybody, but they didn't know the subject. So I showed to some old queens in Penang, and they managed to identify uh, some of the subjects. And one of them is Anita. She she was still alive. So then they organized for all the interviews for me to get to know her, to study what's happening and what's the stories behind all these photos. Then slowly, it kind of evolved into what it is today. And yeah, I didn't plan to, I didn't go out and look for trans transgender subject. I mean, it's quite weird for anyone to, uh, maybe some people do do that. Yeah. <laughs> It was an accident, and the more I know about the subject, the more I feel I am responsible to, to, to want to handle this subject with care. I, I hope I did her justice. In, she passed away last year. I didn't get to show her, but yeah. What about you, Izinkan saya bercakap dalam bahasa Ibunda. Um, after Monsoon adalah satu daripada uh, sesuatu yang melekat di dalam hati saya sebagai seorang yang lokal yang berada di di desa. Uh, yang berada di pinggiran pantai. Maka apa yang ada di dalam uh, klip yang saya buat adalah uh, berdasarkan kehidupan sebenar yang pasti akan dilalui oleh mereka setiap tahun. Sama ada bencana itu besar ataupun kecil sahaja. Dan uh, uh, mungkin selepas ini saya akan bincangkan dan uh, share apakah uh, yang ada di sebalik 
klip tersebut. So siapakah budak-budak dalam uh, video kamu? Do you do you know them? Do you okay. professional pelakon? <laughs> <laughs> you tahu masa tu adalah MCO kawalan pergerakan oleh government. So the the clips were made yeah. uh, during the MCO. Yeah. Okay. Masa tu uh, saya tahu saya saya ada surat uh, berulang dari Cyberjaya. Uh, ke Kelantan dan masa MCO saya banyak di Kelantan because my family ada di Kelantan dan uh, di saat itu saya tahu um, kanak-kanak di di bandar memang kalau dalam bilik mereka pun <laughs> dipakaikan mask macam kita sekarang tapi pada MCO itu saya ada surat untuk pelepasan saya masih mencintai lapangan tersebut tempat yang dikatakan after monsoon itu bila saya pergi sampai ke sana saya melihat satu kejutan bagi saya mereka sedang bermain bola di sekitar rumah bererti bukan parents saja tidak uh, concern pad, uh, apa ambil berat pada uh, uh, anak-anak mereka tetapi budaya dan suasana terlalu kontradik dengan apa yang ada di sini di bandar, di bandar ya So this was around the time that the lockdown is very strict lah. Yes. Yeah. Jadi apabila you tanya siapa budak-budak itu sebenarnya I pun tak tahu siapa budak itu. Okay. Cuma I It's just whoever you can find on the street lah. Yeah. <laughs> no. Ha, yeah. Ya. Sebab bila I nak ambil uh, footage budak ni, memang I, I I kena tackle dia punya parents. Siapa orang ini datang zaman musim ni orang tak tak berlaku pergerakan tiba-tiba datang nak ambil footage orang semua. Then terus terang kalau nak ambil footage ya record anak I bawa duit raya actually. Because I, I, I ingat macam book is not corruption bukan rasuah apa sebab uh, I kena bawa angpau because bagi bagi orang happy because I tak nak berlaku fitnah pada yeah. dia okay. So that I cakap because uh, I, 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 I nak explain macam mana nak ambil footage budak ni untuk buat apa dia akan tanya soalan macam-macam so that okay bila I lepas benda tu I boleh buat but tak boleh panjang but this this time was around uh, after, right after the monsoon period is it? yeah so uh, when is can, maybe you can talk about when is the monsoon period normally in Kelantan and what are like the major effects of the monsoon on the residents of uh, Of a tumpat. Okay. Um, bak kata pepatah apa? Kalau takut di lambung ombak, jangan berumah di tepi pantai. <laughs> ha? ya. Betul lah. Ha? Kalau salah. Ha? Awak tahu? Bila kita berada di lapangan site saya tu, di, di lapangan kita akan menghadapi dengan laut yang setinggi 10 kaki lebih 3 meters and above lebih kelajuan angin pada masa itu adalah 3 30 slow 50 hingga 60 km sejam kuat you boleh tumbang macam kalau you ada di Taiwan typhoon sama you boleh tumbang kalau you berada dekat situ so that uh, bayangkan bagaimana kehidupan orang di sana yang tidak boleh buat kerja apa-apa. Budak-budak dalam rumah, orang tua keluar untuk mencari rezeki, tidak. Pergi ke laut sama sekali sumber rezeki mereka. Ya. Dan saya masih lagi boleh uh, merasai kalau selepas uh, semasa musim monsun bau ikan kering, ikan bengkak, budu dan sebagainya, itulah. Sampai lekat di rambut Ha. Abang akan sebab based on uh, uh, saya punya study adalah um, dia melibatkan kehidupan orang di sana. Kehidupan adalah macam mana dia cari makan sehingga dia makan. Berarti dari sudut gastronomi apa yang mereka makan pada semasa monsun pun kita ambil kira. So, uh, what is the after monsoon project, and how long have you been researching or documenting the monsoon season in Kelantan? Wow, 
apakah after monsoon? <laughs> ya. Selepas monsoon. Monsoon adalah setiap kali. Dia bukan binali ataupun trinali macam aksin ya. Sebagaimana saya katakan kalau tadi ya kita tengok angin yang ada di bawah skirt Mary Monroe tidak sekuat angin yang ada di sana sehingga dia menyelak atap-atap rumah-rumah di sana. Boleh? Ya? So that after monsoon itu adalah sebenarnya isu kontradiksi di antara darat dan laut kanak-kanak dan dewasa keterangan dan ribut waima sehinggalah hidup dan mati so kalau you tengok dalam ada seorang lelaki yang membawa kepala tengkorak kerbau yang hanyut dan Jumpaan-jumpaan dari, daripada kanak-kanak itu adalah satu hantaran daripada laut kepada darat. Muntahan laut itulah yang menjadi subjek kepada after monsoon itu. Ya. Yeah. Uh, is uh, after monsoon your first project that documents the monsoon, or you have done projects about the monsoon and about this community before? Okay, good. After Monsoon adalah sebenarnya satu projek yang mana salah satu daripada artwork di dalam projek itu yang kita tengok tadi. Jadi sebenarnya After Monsoon itu kemungkinan tidak akan berakhir pada uh, artwork ini sahaja. Ya, yeah. Kerana uh, untuk buat masa sekarang, uh, saya dan beberapa uh, rakan artis lain akan uh, bersama-sama membuat projek after monsoon di sana uh, dengan uh, menjemput beberapa orang artis lain dalam konteks disiplin yang berbeza. I mean bila berlakunya saya, saya ingin melihat bila berlakunya cross disiplin di situ bagaimana kehasil yang lain yang akan keluar setiap tahun. Sebagaimana sampah yang sampai di uh, tapak di sana. Kalau kita tengok pada klip video yang pendek tadi, sebenarnya adalah berlaku semasa tiga tahun proses saya mengambil dokumentasi di sana. Ya. Apabila seorang lelaki itu tidur bersama dengan tengkorak kerbau yang berada di atas bangkai kapal itu, Sebenarnya pada tahun ini kapal itu dah tak ada. Itu tiga tahun lepas. Dua tahun lepas dia hantar kepada kita plastik. Tahun ini dia hantar kayu. So uh, all the artifacts that you showed in the video are taken from around the area lah, correct? Like they are like all the muntahan laut that sure. comes up. Uh, berdasarkan pengalaman saya, mm. uh, saya sebagai seorang penyelidik bebas, mm-hmm. saya terpengaruh dengan cara saya uh, membuat dokumentasi. Yeah. Jadi sudah pasti kalau kita tengok apa yang ada uh, di setiap, saya pasti kalau sesiapa yang hadir ke tapak itu, ke lapangan itu, dia adalah merupakan satu uh, tempat awak boleh berimajinasi dengan mewah sekali untuk uh, mengadakan uh, sesuatu objek kerana dia adalah satu artifak ya yeah. so is that why you chose to also interview children about what they want to about what they want to do when they grow up lah so is the the after mon- the beach after the monsoon with all the waste is uh, kind of like their playground lah uh, the place where they imagine ya yeah, elen um, dibayangkan macam mana i boleh jumpa tempat itu adalah semasa sebenarnya apabila saya melihat satu limpahan muntahan laut yang hmm. terlalu sarat dengan sampah hmm. tapi bila saya mendekati sampah itu saya lihat sebenarnya sampah yang ada di sini adalah 
sampah yang telah dibilas, yang telah dicuci oleh laut. Dan bila saya mendengar suara budak-budak di situ, rupanya di situ adalah tempat playground mereka. Budak-budak kampung, itu dia main. Saya tengok, apa yang you bawa? Dia cakap, ah, dia jumpa apa tak? Yang tu, you bawa apa yang ni? Lepas tu, bila kita tunggu sampai hampir malam, petang, senja, dia balik. Ada yang bawa balik ke rumah sampah itu, ada yang kena marah dengan mak dia. Ada yang sebelum kena marah, baik aku letak dulu sini, aku, esok aku ambil lagi. So that, itu adalah bagaimana mereka menghargai. Dari situ titik tolak, saya berfikir, sebenarnya, apa yang mereka uh, ambil itu adalah sebenarnya objek-objek yang akan menjadi subjek. Ya, yeah. uh, Yeah, so I find it very interesting that in your video there is no sort of political message. Like, uh, you know, you just show the waste as it is, and then you show the kids sort of playing amongst the waste. But there's no political overtone about like, oh, this is so bad for the environment, blah blah blah. So I'm, I find that very interesting, and I was wondering if you can talk more about uh, your idea, your concept of contradictions and um, the turning the object into subject yeah yeah um, apa yang saya sebut daripada objek kepada subjek tadi merupakan adalah uh, diselitkan falsafah di sebalik itu ya yeah. hmm. um, sebenarnya sampah-sampah yang di yang terdapat di situ merupakan statement yang besar bagi saya kerana apabila apa yang kita jumpai kadang dia tercatat di situ kalau directly secara directnya dia tercatat made in Vietnam ya yeah. made in Hong Kong is it orang Malaysia yang beli ataupun memang betul daripada Hong Kong betul lah eh? so ada Pelbagai botol-botol yang saya jumpa yang yang hanyut termasuklah botol yang statementnya adalah agak ngeri untuk saya bawa balik dan saya tak nak bawa balik saya takut dia ikut because dalam botol tu sok-sok ada setan ada hantu dalam tu hmm? ya yeah. so apabila daripada objek-objek yang dipilih itu sebagaimana yang uh, Proses saya membuat satu kajian iaitu kita collect data basic sebab ini adalah uh, sesuatu yang saya tidak boleh membawa kepada satu benda yang berat kerana message yang saya ingin sampaikan adalah uh, setiap orang yang merasai selepas monsun itu uh, pasti uh, akan melihat akan <coughs> apa yang terkesan di sebaliknya saya tidak Membawa dalam bentuk sentimental Kepada Kesian budak-budak ini Kenapa Pihak tertentu tak datang untuk melihat Macam mana Sudah pasti Kerana di setiap lembaran Dalam lima minit yang saya buat tadi Adalah Saya cuba Memberi ruang Kepada orang yang melihatnya Boleh berfikir Setiap boleh katakan chapter yang ada di situ Justru bagaimana apabila saya melihat dinosaur yang dipegang oleh budak itu yang dijumpai you nak bawa balik tak? Nak bawa balik eh? sebab dia cakap dinosaur ni comel eh? molek so still good lah maknanya masih molek then saya cakap izinkan saya menggunakan ini untuk saya uh, panggil professional photographer untuk shoot di dalam waktu yang terbaik So, sebelum subuh kami sudah sampai untuk shoot gambar untuk tengok macam mana jadi um, begitu juga dengan patung kanak-kanak yang dijumpai patung itu sudah tidak sempurna, tiada kepala, tiada kaki hanya tubuh dan kalau letak dalam satu ruang itu mungkin dia keluar, saya tak tahu keluar jin apa <laughs> mungkin dia sudah berada berapa puluh tahun dalam laut kerana dah lekat dengan coral dan sebagainya So bila saya letakkan satu subjek ini Saya panggil budak-budak ni Kita boleh bincangkan tentang ini Bagaimana perbincangan Kanak-kanak terhadap Apa yang dijumpai You komen 
agak-agak ini patung apa? Cakap patung budak. Dia cakap ini. Eh mungkin orang tua. Eh tak ada, dia dah 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 gaduh sama dia. Ini patung laki ke perempuan, tak tahu macam mana. So sebenarnya mereka membicarakan tentang tentang biologi, tentang part of body, tentang anatomi. Sains sains di dalam apa yang dikatakan sampah tadi. Bahan pendidikan. Jadi menjawab kepada soalan Alan tadi, uh, very simple saja untuk saya tak nak pusing kepala kepada saya sendiri. Objek-objek itu sebenarnya adalah subjek kepada mereka dan kepada kita sendiri. Ya. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, it's very interesting both of your video works because they use the form of video and photography without necessarily being without necessarily trying to convey a specific message, they really just like document as it is. Uh, maybe maybe now like the both of you can just talk about why you chose to use the medium of video and photography and what how how you think your works like why did you submit your works for the Ilham art show and how you think they differ if you think they differ from like film or documentary. Yeah. Hello. So, like I said, I collected this um, small collection of portraits of a young boy and a woman which belonged to the same person since 2013. Then in 2020, maybe some of you have been to the exhibition here, Bayang Nia Timbo Tenggelam. So I exhibited like a, a triptych of Ava's um, portraits. And there is something I think photos can't do. And there's something quite um, fascinating about human voices and stories. Uh, I think most of us, we, we, we love listening to a good story. And I think photo itself can't, uh, by listening to Anita just now, the warmth, the texture of her voice carries a lot more than visual. And for me to apply for Ilham Open Core is also because I spent a really long time with this material. I needed to have some form of a closure with this project. I need to make sense of my my uh, friendship with Anita. I need to make sense with this volume of interviews and material. Hence, I come up with this work, which I loosely call it a photo video essay because that's there's no essay in this essay. It's just like an edit of um, interviews and voices with photos. So I, maybe some of you can help me to understand what is a video essay. I kind of try to pass it as a video essay, but it's that, that isn't an essay there. Cause <laughs> but yeah, so this is why. I, I needed like a structure to help me to force myself to have a closure. It's not really a closure. Uh, progressive closure to this project because me and William and uh, some other friends are working on a book a photo book about this project so that is my answer to you. Um, dalam proses sebenarnya uh, after monsoon ini juga adalah salah satu daripada apa yang dilihat dalam proses penyediaan dokumen. So salah satu daripada proses penyediaan dokumen adalah uh, uh, sketching, uh, video dan uh, pasti gambar lah, foto. Jadi um, untuk mencapai uh, penonton uh, lebih menghargai uh, uh, site itu, um, maka saya lebih terdorong untuk menjadikan video dan uh, gambar adalah uh, medium dalam dalam projek inilah. Um, just to follow that up, I know in terms of actually creating videos of stories of narratives that aren't really your own, I know if in your circumstance you're giving out ampaus, um, not really in exchange for information, but basically for a gesture, right? And for for Fun John's video, it's not really a story of, about your own experiences or anything. So how did you find, or how did you feel whether, like that you were fine with giving, you know, showing the audience someone else's story? And was there a cer certain like event 
that made you feel like Anissa really wanted her stories to be told in that way? So it's a question about ethic, right? Yes, yeah, yes. ethics and... Um, yeah. Like I said before, I, I, I've had this photo collection for almost nine years now. So I only got to know Anita in 2017. So then I felt like I had the responsibility to, to this um, photo collection and it's growing. She, she's been feeding, she's been giving me more and more photos. Uh, I now have maybe close to six or seven hundreds of photos. I, I've been archiving them. So one thing that uh, gave me the, encouraged me to, to make this work is also because she wanted to be famous. And she kind of sometimes hinted at me to show some of her photos of the wax follies on social media. And, and she oh. even designed the, the tagline. She said, you should write like, uh, have you heard of the wax follies? Well, where are they right now? So she kind of see me as a person to maybe to have her second waves of glams and yeah. fame. So, so she wanted this. I think she really wanted to be famous. That kind of made me, get, that kind of gave me the license to really go or I didn't. I don't think I went all out to really make her famous, but <laughs> but at least you know. Yeah, I also believe the longer we remember, the longer she lives. So you know, by watching a video like this, yeah, she she kind of gave me uh, the kind of blessing to you know please take this work further. So and where is me in this whole project is also. Uh, the proposal I wrote to Elham was to revisit some of the places that she mentioned in those interviews or kind of reenact some of the scenes in her performances like the... Uh, it wasn't me who was putting on the stockings but I asked a friend to help me to do that and you know like uh, popping the balloons, those were the stories she told to me so I wanted to reenact. By doing these things I feel like I can re-experience what, you know, what was it like for her you know, when she was performing and I was cruising in Chow Kit. <laughs> I was trying to cruise. I wasn't really cruising, but I was driving in a very weird way <laughs> to look as if I was cruising. I wanted to experience that. Yeah. Which it, wasn't, it wasn't a good time to, because it was Chinese New Year and there was nobody there. Yeah, so I, this is my, my effort in trying to maybe get closer to her world a little bit more. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I, I wanted to actually make the same note uh, you know, you made because I think uh, I felt it was very poetic uh, when she said that she burned or she threw away the pictures of her friends who died. And it's very interesting because we think that we take photographs so that it lives forever beyond us. But she treats it as an ephemera, right? Uh, and, and, and there's a lot of very interesting thinking behind ephem ephemeral art anyway. Yeah. Uh, something that lives and dies. So you don't think of photograph doing that. But she, she treats her photograph that way. But yet here, we are seeing her image live on beyond her. So... So I, I think it's interesting and quite diabolical that you left the audience with this tension uh, of hearing her say that she, she may want uh, her images to be gone after she died, but now we are stuck seeing her images uh, and, and, and wondering whether she consented to this, right? But, um, but at some point, I also felt that because she did give you this interview, yeah. and now I'm hearing you say this, she must have agreed to it, you know, and, and so I'm also very curious to know if she ever expressed uh, any change, right, from, from her, uh, her idea of what the images are for, you know, yeah. um, because it sounded like, yeah, it sounded like there must be something in her that makes her think that these images must go yeah. when she dies, and then something changed. I, I, I would just, well, this is a lot louder. Um, well, I have more power now, I feel. 
Um, no, I, the, the, when I first discovered this photo, I, uh, my background is in photography. I, I study photography. Uh, my degree was in photography, even though I'm not a very good photographer. I, I love to collect old photographs, hence the reason I chance upon you know, this you know, very special collection. Um, I, th I look, when, just a bit of backstory, when I was interviewing her, because I thought this whole project was about photography, I was asking her lots of really academic, like charged questions. I asked her things like, what is photography to you? She gave me like one word and two words answer. I was thinking I was really silly. I didn't really try to understand her. Later on, when I was talking to her about dresses, makeups, and um, artists and performances she liked, then she really started to open up to me. So back to photography culture, I think within the transgender community during her time, this was like... Uh, a thing they do to exchange each other. It's also almost like a testimony. You see how much of a woman and how beautiful I am. Mm -hmm. This is what I did. Look at my makeup technique, the dresses and the wig. I mean, in a way, it's like a, a mouse of a showed off to each other. To, it's a good competition amongst them. So they do that. They exchange photos amongst themselves. And when they pass away, they tend to destroy the photographs. I think partly it's also because they don't want to be ended up like Ava's photo in an antique shop that, you know, found by someone else because they need to protect their identity. I think some of them, they might have a double life, you know, they they live a straight life and they have this, they moonlight as a female impersonator and all that. So I think that could be that. But uh, sadly for Anita, I think uh, she, uh, her family didn't uh, honor her the gender she wanted. But I think we're still celebrating her gender as she wants in this photo video work. So in a way, photo to her is testimony. And sometimes I think it's pragmatic reason they, they destroy them, so to speak, destroy them, because they don't want the photo to be ended up in some, you know, <laughs> distance. Uh, also another story, during the, the Bayang Air, the photography exhibition in 2020, so um, another big uh, local KL photo, uh, old photo collector, he also had some of um, Ava's photos and he didn't know about this. So when he learned about my story, he, he actually gave me, you know, to help me to build this collection of Ava's um, portraits. So. I'm also hello. Uh, I'm also interested in what, like following this, like what the kids at Pulau Tengkorak thought you were doing. Like, do you explain to them that you're an artist and you're making a video, or do you, or do they think they're gonna be famous, or like what do they think that you're doing with like a camera and like asking them questions? Okay. Scam <laughs> datang kampung. Macam mana saya nak cakap Ya, betul <coughs> So, um, first Saya uh, tanya Di kalangan dia orang I ask them Saya tanya dia uh, Sebelum saya tanya Dia nak jadi apa hmm, Ya yeah. Itu uh, Kita interview dia Yang yang mana uh, Dia Kebanyakannya Apa yang Statement yang dia bagi itu adalah sebenarnya uh, yang yang berlaku yang tidak pernah dilihat <laughs> oleh orang 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 biasa. Uh, so maksudnya contoh uh, bagaimana uh, jauhnya cita-cita uh, seorang budak ini uh, daripada nak jadi jaga hingga ke nak jadi astronot. Okay, so that uh, apa yang uh, mengejutkan saya adalah bagaimana uh, dia orang membicarakan tentang uh, apa yang terdapat uh, dalam mistik di situ. Bererti budak-budak tidak akan bercakap kalau orang tua tidak memberitahu ataupun uh, uh, apa yang berlaku. Okay. Contohnya mereka percayakan ada hantu air Contoh misal kata So dia cakap di situ ada hantu so, Kerana 
padahal uh, orang tua tak nak pada masa one soon ribut itu anak dia akan jadi susah kena ribut dan sebagainya so dia dia still lagi memberi satu kawasan itu tabu dengan uh, uh, um, ya yeah, statement-statement yang macam tu ya yeah. uh, jadi uh, jadi antara anak-anak orang yang ada di situ ada anak orang yang betul-betul uh, yang miskin lah maknanya dia orang memang ayahnya kerja tak macam uh, kerja susah lepas tu ada yang memang toke kepada komuniti uh, uh, di situ so dia dia dia, dia bercampur uh, di situ dan kita boleh tengok background dia melalui statement yang yang kita kita interview dengan dia orang lah ya yeah. I just wanted to comment yang uh, kedua-dua uh, no, Cik, Cik Azhar punya um, work after monsoon I think in the five minutes there was a very intense uh, presentation of of of, uh, of life I guess uh, kedalaman uh, apa yang dibincangkan dalam 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 video essay tersebut uh, sebab, <laughs> sebabnya of course uh, the, the, the when you talked about the element of washing clean and sending it back balik ke darat kan semuanya ada ada elemen penyucian yang berlaku dari laut dan dan dipulangkan balik ke darat uh, i think juxtaposition the juxtaposition of 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 you talking about the monsoon being how stormy and how 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 strong and how how uh, how violent that can be against uh, the start of this video where everything is quite calm and this person is carrying uh, something that came from the sea yang dah dibersihkan so the intensity of that against the time lapse i guess from from a generation thing of, of this one man and the kid so you're saying a lot in 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 that five minutes so it's just really really intense and thank you for that experience uh <laughs> um the the subject of that man was he more of a narrator sebagai uh medium untuk menyampaikan saja kita pun ada is there a reason why you put that person in, in that video okay um, sebenarnya video itu adalah sememangnya adalah saya sendiri dan uh, sebenarnya apa yang saya uh, itu adalah satu ilusi itu adalah satu ilusi kebenaran apabila sesiapa yang uh, datang ke situ itu ada ilusi yang semasa saya berada di di sana Sebagaimana yang saya bincang tadi adalah um, contohnya apabila saya berada di dalam sebuah kapal bangkai maaf ya di dalam bangkai sebuah kapal yang hanya tinggal 10% saja 10% sahaja bangkai kapal yang saya tidur di atas dia justru um, sebenarnya se, se, uh, se, Sekiranya ditengok di dalam subjek, dia adalah merupakan satu arsitektur dan engineering yang dahsyat sebenarnya. Jadi, kenapa saya meletakkan itu adalah uh, set, daripada kehidupan sebenar, uh, bot itu pernah hidup. Kapal itu pernah hidup. Berarti dia pernah bekerja untuk dia orang cari makan dan dia mati di situ. Jadi, kemungkinan kanak-kanak ataupun saya lebih le, lebih nampak mendo, kanak-kanak mendominasikan dalam ruang dalam ruang video tadi adalah uh, orang yang sememangnya kemungkinan mereka itu adalah orang yang bakal arkitek ataupun bakal seorang engineer uh, begitu nah, jadi sebab itu kebanyakan uh, maaf ke, sebenarnya Kebanyakan uh, kalau you tengok dalam uh, naratif, narasi yang ada dalam video itu um, Objek-objek yang dijumpai itu Yang diselitkan uh, sebagai subjek yang sebenarnya yang, yang mereka tempuhi Ataupun yang sebenarnya kejian, uh, sebenarnya yang terjadi hmm. okay. um, Are there any more audience questions for either of the two? Hi. I think it's on. Hi. So, um, 
Yeah. Things good, right? My question is for Fan Chun actually. Um, so I want to ask about because you yourself, your background is photography. Um, the space, the studio space itself, as a place where subculture, like the tri the drag culture, is thriving, right? So, what do you think about that space? And again, um, we have a lot of young people around here who doesn't have experience going to how important a photo space is. I'm not that young myself, but I don't have experience going to the photo studios because I grew up, my father loved photography, grew up having DSLR at home. Um, so can you talk a little bit about the space as a subculture and how subculture thrive in that photo studio space? Because we don't see photo studios a lot these days also. Yeah. But I, I think that is very specific to a certain period. Uh, it, it, it may be, you know, back in the 60s to all the way to um, maybe 80s. But also, that is a class divide. Uh, not everyone can afford to. Like, uh, Ava's sort of lifestyle is just impossible because he kind of went to the studio. I used it the pronoun interchangeably because that's how they do it as well. <clears throat> Ava uh, would maybe visit the photo studio once every two weeks. Uh, you can see Anita has got a lot less portraits because she couldn't afford that. She would just demand him to go to photo studio. So it is a space for people to do, to kind of subvert the intended purpose of photography. Uh, they, they do, they use their own imagination to make photography work for them. And uh, it's not just restricted to transgender community because I've uh, heard, actually I wrote about this as well, um, during the show, they, they were mistresses. You, you know, uh, back in those days, in the 70s and 60s, photo studio opened from day to night, you know, even until midnight. So um, daytime, they make wedding photography and then nighttime, they make kind of like secret wedding photography for mistresses. And they, they, people use photography, you know, according to their kind of cultural uh, values and conducts. And, and they were a blank photography as well, like a, a, a rich and nyonya matriarch will put on their jewel and everything. They go to take a photo without negative. They just needed to be flashed at. So all their jewels would be blessed with superpower and you know, it's like a good luck charm photography. So there's all these sort of things people do with. <laughs> yes, it's true. So yeah, and also even the, um, because Julia Street in Penang, there's lots of brothels there, <laughs> and then all these uh, famous uh, the number one uh, woman of the night, they will have their portrait display outside of the studio. So you know, they have all these sort of practices. To studio, for, but it's also a class thing. We need to. Not everyone can afford that. So for these days, I think people are still doing a lot of that with uh, IG filters, and I think it's inherent uh, quality in human to want to change things to what we want it to be. Right. So we do a lot more crazier things with IG these days than, and it's a lot more advanced. You know, <laughs> I can be a cat right now. <laughs> with his flapping ears and all that. So I, I see that that uh, that lineage from wanting to change what we the the, the medium is designed to do. Yeah. Oh yeah, sorry. I just um I think because when, when you asked Fanchon with regards to ethics and consent, uh yes. sorry, cat uh, when you asked about ethics and consent, uh um I've witnessed this journey um, to um, where it is now, which is Ilham Open Call, and uh, the Bayang Timbot Teglam, which talks about, which addresses the photo of the Nyonyas and Women of the Night and so on. But um, in terms of Eva and Alex, and I just wanted to share it with this audience because we, we don't want to miss it out. Um, uh, Anita actually joined, um, actually graced uh, an audience with her presence at this Obscura, uh, an event called Obscura in Penang. She was there. And it was her statement there that she said she wanted to be famous. So it's not, yeah, it's consent, I guess, in, in the long run was given already by this subject. So, yeah. She gave this statement. Yeah, so right, right in public. And, and, and it was, uh, I think, uh, as a witness to, that, to this journey, um, everybody there was very excited when, when they knew that she was there. Also to she's famous in 
Well, no, the sh I think uh, the, the photos were shared. The photos were shared, and she was there to witness it together. And then when when uh, Fan Chun told that uh, that she was there, everybody got excited, and and that was where people talked about wanting to tell her story more and so on. So yeah. So consent was given. Yeah. And apparently she did do the splits, right? At yeah, during um, this was during Os Obscura Photography Festival in Georgetown, and <clears throat> I was doing my presentation. I didn't tell the audience she was there, and then at the end of my presentation, I announced that she was there, and everyone gasped. And then, but she just took on the stage, you know, everyone just focusing on her, not my presentation. And, but she did a split while sitting. She was 80 something. Uh, yes, it's, that is the showgirl in her that, you know, maybe she was, she gave me the consent. I just hope whatever I did here or in the future would do her justice. Because maybe some of the photos I show here, she might not, have agreed to some of them because I really show from they were young and you know they were performing to all the way to they were older, but that my intention was actually to also talk about to stay pretty, to stay um, kind of in character for them is a lot of work. It's really impossible, uh, you know, when you are much older to really put on all this makeup and dresses and it's so much work. It, the simple effort act of pulling your hair and to look clean shaven is just too much. I wanted to show that on, yeah. Hello? Hello? Okay. Hi, I am Zixi from Utah Broadcasting Student. I want to ask two questions uh, for two different videos. The first one is, I saw a person lying on the pile of sand. I don't know what is it. Can I ask that? What is it? After the interview, so, there is a person lying on the pile of sand. Okay. Uh, seorang lelaki yang terbaring di atas pasir itu ya. Yeah. Okay. Dia adalah <coughs> um, sebagaimana saya kata uh, berlakunya satu fantasi uh, di dalam Pemikiran beliau semasa beliau berada semasa monsun selepas uh, sebelum monsun semasa monsun dan selepas monsun. Jadi uh, itu adalah konsep contradiction kontradiksi di antara kehidupan dan kematian. Kalau perasaan dia bukan bertelanjang bukan bertelanjang penuh bertelanjang separuh. Ya, separuh. ya bertelanjang separuh. Uh, di sebelah tengkorak uh, simbol kematian di situ. Nah, jadi di itu adalah uh, permulaan untuk cerita menyatakan bagaimana i ilusi beliau di dalam uh, uh, kejadian selepas berlakunya sebelum berlakunya after monsoon. Okay, thank you. Then the second one question is, I heard that Anita is uh, Malay. I think. She's a Malay, but she's... But Anita is Eurasian. Oh, yeah. that's why she said she's Catholic. Okay, thank you. Yeah, And actually, I also want to talk maybe a bit about... Uh, I know two of the subjects that I feature in this documentary, they they do not represent maybe, you know, all the transgender struggle because they... First, they have their mother's blessing. That is like one of the key support. Second of all, they may be somewhat middle class and they are a bit more mobile. So they can joke about prostituting themselves and you know, so I just want to say I, they don't represent the entire, you know, transgender community struggle. Any other questions in the audience? Actually I have a quick question. Was it too long actually for my work? Not long enough. Okay. Find me more subjects. Yeah, for aspiring filmmakers, you know, talk to them too. Okay, right. So 
Do you have any other questions for the audience? Can I ask one more question? Oh, yeah, sure. Um, so do Anita and Eva actually identify as transgender, or do they just like dressing up? No, they are women. They are women. Yeah. So they identify as women. Yeah. And do they have, like, what are their, do, do you ever ask them what are their thoughts on, like, the sort of, like, contemporary gender politics? Do they keep up with it? Do they, are they aware of, like, you know, like, contemporary I, currents in gender politics and all that? I can only speak maybe for Anita. Uh -huh. I never met Ava, but Anita, for her, really, she just wanted to be left alone mm. and be glamorous on stage and be a, look to look amazing on stage. That's all she cared about. I don't think she, she wants to be involved in the gender politics because throughout the interview, she kept mentioning, I am a government pensioner, you mm. know, like, I want to have my own life, but please keep giving me my pension because I need to survive on that. So for her, it's all pragmatic. It's all for practicality. I, I don't think she's a feminist or she wants to advocate for something. She just wants it to be left alone and have her pension and, you know, live her life. Yeah. Okay, right. Well, if you don't have any other questions for the artists, um, no, thank you so much for coming in, and um, and yeah, thank you so much for being here, and thanks, Alan, for helping. <laughs> thank you.